the rhythm of my body is the same as my mother tongue it is in this rhythm where i find sanctity that i can return to my mother who is everywhere in the universe dear students today we are going to read the lesson the last lesson written by alphonse dodet alphonse dodet's the last lesson is set in elsick a territory that was disputed between france and germany then a pa part of prussia france had been defeated by prussia in the franco prussian war and elsick and lorin had been handed over to prussia this is an account of the students who were then forced to study german the students and other citizens who identified themselves as being french viewed the fact that they had not valued their mother tongue in the story the french districts of elsick and lorin had passed into prussian hands hence they received an order from berlin that only german was to be taught in the schools of elsick and lorin it was then that all of them realized the value of their language the usually noisy scene at the school was replaced by one that was as quiet as sunday church about the author french short story writer and novelist alphonse dodet was born on may 13 1840 at nimes in france but spent most of his childhood in lyon He wrote his first poems at the young age of 14. He began his career as a teacher at Ells Guard in south of Frank, France. Mainly remembered for his sentimental tales of provincial life in southern France. Theme of the lesson. The story, the last lesson is set during the Franco-Prussian War. the themes of patriotism freedom of language and the love for one's mother tongue are predominant in the story the story reflects upon the arrogance of the colonizer to forcibly take away the rights of those who are colonized linguistic chauvinism the people of elsick and lorins are forcibly made to learn german instead of french their mother tongue The story presents the perspective of a student friends who did not take the subject seriously before but now enjoys his last lesson it is only after the people are denied the freedom of learning their own language that they realize its value and the threat to their culture introduction to the characters there are four main characters friends a school student and the narrator of the story mr hamel teacher of the french language watcher blacksmith old hauser and elderly villager now we will understand the story The narrator friends was worried as he started late for school from home. He was also very anxious about facing his teacher Mr. Amel who was to question the class about participles. A topic friends did not know anything about. He thought of running away and spending the day outdoors as it was warm and bright. He noticed the birds were chirping and the Prussian soldiers were drilling in the sawmill. All this seemed much more interesting than studying participles. However, he refused to give in to temptation and hastened off to school. Friends noticed a crowd at the bulletin board near the town hall and he wondered what news had been posted there but he kept walking watcher the town blacksmith assured him 
that he would reach the school in time and he need not walk so fast. On his way to school, he crossed his, the town hall and where there was a crowd in front of the bulletin board. The news displayed there was at times about the lost battles or the drafts or the orders of the commanding officer. He recalled that for the last two years, the news displayed there had been unwelcome. He wondered what it was this time as he hurried off to school. As a rule, when school began, there was a great commotion which could be heard even in the street. It was the statistics noise of opening and closing of desks, lesson repeated in chorus, or the teacher's ruler rapping on the table. Surprisingly, that day all was very quiet. He had thought that he would sneak into the class taking advantage of the commotion, but the school was as quiet as Sunday morning. Peeping in through the window, he saw his classmates already in their places and M. Hamel walking to and fro with his iron ruler under his arm. In the classroom. He had no option but to open the door and go in with all eyes staring at him, so he felt both embarrassed and frightened. Much to his amazement, M. Hamel saw him and very kindly told him to take his place. When he sat down at his desk, he noticed that the teacher was formally dressed in his green coat, frilled shirt and the little black silk cap. His attire was embroidered. He never wore this dress except on formal occasions such as inspection or prize days. He also noticed that the whole school seemed strange and serious. Moreover, on the back benches that were always empty, the villagers were sitting quietly, like the students. He noticed old Hauser, the former mayor, the former postmaster and several others. All looked sad and Hauser had brought an old primer that he had opened on his knees with his spectacle lying across the pages. M. Hamel informed the students that this was his last French lesson and henceforth only German would be taught in the schools of Elsick and Lauren. Upon hearing this, Franz felt sorry for not working hard on his French lessons. He realized that everyone was there to thank the teacher for his service and show solidarity for the country that was theirs no more. He sat wondering till he heard M. Hamel announcing in a gentle tone that it was the last French lesson. It was an order from Berlin to teach only German in the schools of Elsick and Lorraine. They would get a new master the next day. Since this was their last French lesson, he wanted all of them to be very attentive. This was a shocking piece of news and friends at once gathered that this was the news that was displayed on the bulletin board. Friends barely knew any French and now he would not have to learn it anymore. But somehow he was sorry for not learning his lessons. His books that had seemed such a bother till a while back were now precious and he felt he could not give them up. He even felt sad at the thought of M. Hamel going away. Surprising since he was a person who friends had never liked. Since this was his last lesson, Mr. Hamel had put on his fine clothes and the old men of the village were sitting there in the back of the room because they were sorry that they had not gone to school for longer. They were there as they wanted to thank Mr. Hamel for his 40 years of faithful service and to show their respect for the country that was now not theirs. Just then, the writer heard his name called. It was his turn to recite the rules of participles, but he could not. He was very nervous, but Mr. Hamel said that he would not scold him as he was sure that Franz was feeling terribly himself. He had postponed his learning and now there was no chance of learning French. 
now he would be questioned on his identity of being a Frenchman as someone who could neither speak nor write his own language. But M. Hamel blamed everyone for the situation. He felt that French parents were not keen that he study. On the contrary, they preferred that he work to earn a little more money. He blamed himself for sending friends often to water his flowers instead of having him learn his lessons. He was sorry for giving them a day off when he wanted to go fishing. Hamel described the French language as the most beautiful in the world and urged the students to guard it and never forget. The class continued with a grammar lesson while Hamel sat motionless in his chair gazing at one thing or another. Then they had a lesson in writing for which Mr. Hamel gave them a new copies on which was written France, Elsac, France, Elsac that looked like little flags in the classroom. Hamel's sister was packing upstairs as they had to leave the next day. This was followed by a history lesson and the babies chant chanted their ba bi bi bo bu old hauser a villager elder was crying mr hamel added that the french language was the most beautiful language in the world it was the clearest and the most logical thus it had to be guarded when people are enslaved there Language is like the key to their prison. Then he opened a grammar book and read a lesson to the class. French was surprised to see how well he understood it. It seemed so simple. This was because he had never listened so carefully. And M. Hamel had never explained everything with so much patience. It appeared that the teacher wanted to share all his knowledge before going away. After the grammar, they had a lesson in writing. Mr. Hamel gave them new copies on which was written in beautiful handwriting, France, Elsac, France, Elsac. The copies looked like little flags in the school rooms. Everyone started working very quietly with rapt attention. Franz wondered whether the pigeons on the roof would be made to sing in German. Franz looked up and saw Mr. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair. It seemed as if he wanted to fix in his mind on everything in that little schoolroom. He had been there for 40 years and now it must break his heart to leave it all and the country the next day. But he had decided to teach to the very last moment. After the writing, they had a lesson in history. At the back of the room, Hazar put on his spectacles and held his primer. He tried to spell the letters with them. He was crying and his voice trembled with emotion. All of them felt equally emotional. Friends never forgot that last lesson. The church clock struck 12 and the midday prayers began. At the same moment came the sound of trumpets of the Prussians returning from drill. Mr. Hamel stood up but found himself unable to speak. He took a piece of chalk and wrote on the blackboard. Vive la France. Then, without speaking, he made a gesture to indicate to the students that school was dismissed and they may leave. The bell announced the time for prayer. They heard the trumpets of the Prussian returning from drill. M. Hamel stood up, but he could not talk as emotions choked him. All he could do was to write Vive la France on the blackboard. Then he took support of the wall and without a word, he signaled to all of them to go. Expressions used in the lesson. Understand the underlined words. What a thunderclap these words were to me. Here, thunderclap means startling and unexpected. When a people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to their language, it is as if they have the key to their prison. The underlined word hold fast to means do not lose their language. Next, don't go so fast. You will get to your school in plenty of time. 
here the underlying word plenty of time means early enough next i never saw him took so look so tall here the underlying word look so tall means seemed very confident here the main character mr hamel a sincere french teacher knew his subject well he is passionate about the french language he is proud of being french he was upset and distressed by the occupation of alsace by the germans he was attached to his town school and the people he is a hard taskmaster mr hamel was very particular about discipline he emphasizes proper learning of the subjects and other students are scared of him mr hamel was an honest and sensitive man he blames himself for being selfish at times the main characters features mr hamel was emotional very hard working patriotic loyal honest and sensitive character of friends friends was very sensitive and innocent he blames himself for ignoring his lessons he worries about the german takeover loves nature friend loves nature very much he enjoys the sunshine bird watching chasing butterflies enjoying he is conscious of his student duties friend wishes that he had prepared for the class he doesn't like being scolded in the class he was very sensitive observant great observant friend notices every little detail on his way to school quick to observe the changes in his surroundings he observes m hamel's efforts to control his emotions main character features he was very observant sensitive nature lover sincere and empathetic thank you for watching the video